The Wahoo Kicker and Kicker Snap Smart Trainers require power to be operational, but what I want to know is, how do they operate when the power is pulled and they're off the grid? Well, today we find out. Why would you want to do this? Well, sometimes at a bike race, you may want to use one of these trainers as your warm up, or if it's a sunny day, you might put it out on the back deck, watch the dog, watch the kids while you get a workout in. So what I'm looking at today is, are they still operational off the grid without power? Is there any level of resistance or enough level of resistance to get a ride? And is it really worth your time? Is it worthwhile using these off the grid? First up, the Kicker 3 Direct Drive Smart Trainer. Without power, you don't get any data transmission. So no AMP Plus, no Bluetooth. There's no interactive uh, response from resistance. And in fact, there's not a lot of resistance at all with this unit. I put the gearing in at 5311 on the bike, spun out at about 110 RPM and it was applying about 80 watts of resistance. Really not enough to even get your workout in whatsoever. If you really do need to use a Kicker Direct Drive Smart Trainer away from the mains power, you're gonna to have to find another power source, either via the car cigarette lighter or a very, very long extension lead. It's definitely a no-go. Next up, the Kicker Snap Wheel-On Smart Trainer. Now this one is a little bit more interesting because it does have a little bit of resistance in the system. Again, you're not gonna get AMP Plus, you're not gonna get Bluetooth, you're not gonna get interactivity, but there's a bit of kickback or a bit of pushback on the pedal stroke. The way I measure this was with the speed of the wheel with the bike speed sensor and the power from the power pedals that I had on the Favero Asiomas. Here's a brief look at a four minute spin up that I did with some data overlay on the Kicker Snap without any power to the unit at all. Breaking from protocol, it's over to Garmin Connect, not DC Rainmaker's analysis tool, to have a look at the data here. It's only from one data source. We're looking at the speed versus power. So down the bottom there in purple is the power, and you can see that it does step up as the speed steps up. There's a few little kick-ins at the start where you really have to change the inertia of the wheel and bring it up to speed, but then it settles. So what we've got there is at 54 k's an hour, about 270 watts applied. That's not too bad for a workout without power from the unit. Stepping up to 60 kilometers per hour, we're getting around about 315, 320 watts of resistance. Not too bad again. And then if you really want to spin out at about 105 RPM, 65 kilometers per hour wheel speed, you're getting about 370, 376 or so watts of resistance. So that's not actually too bad with the kicker snap without power. It does provide a bit of resistance as long as you've got the gearing to really wind it up and you're after that kind of leg speed because that was the 5311 and I really didn't have to crank that over to get those numbers. There are a number of factors that will affect the amount of resistance within the kicker snap such as tire type, tire pressure, tire size and also roller resistance that you screw into. So if you need a little bit more resistance, maybe let your tire down or really jam that roller in. It'll be irresponsible for me not to list a few disclaimers and a few catches for this video. Number one, these units are computers. Their circuitry, they don't like the elements. Any bit of rain or moisture, it's gonna kill your trainer. So be very wary of that. Make sure it's a nice, sunny, dry day. Okay, there we have it, the kicker and kicker snap and how they operate without power. My recommendation, keep them inside, keep them plugged in, grab yourself another trainer, just a cheap, dumb trainer for outdoor use and it's happy days. Okay, thanks for watching, and I've got a few more trainers that I wanna try this off the grid series with. Stay tuned.